Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Tyler and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to resume where we left off in the last video with Rust and Deno FFI. And we're going to be talking about function pointers, callback functions, and asynchronous FFI operations. So let's get started by dealing with how do we return a Rust function pointer to JavaScript for use in JavaScript. So what do I mean by that? What do I mean by returning a function pointer to JavaScript? Well, if we look inside of the lib.rs file, we have two functions, extern c add and a extern function called subtract. They both take in and have the same return type. They both have the same parameter list and they both return the same type. The only difference is one subtracts and one adds, right? Let's say in JavaScript, we don't know which one we're gonna use at compile time, but we wanna be able to return, um, we wanna basically generate or create functions at runtime. So how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and write a function that will return conditionally one of these two functions. So we're gonna say this is no mingle, it's extern c, it's a function, and let's call it create um, math fm. It's gonna take in a boolean, which is gonna be called use add. And this is simply just going to be how we can conditionally determine if we want to use an add function. And the return type of this function is going to be the same return type as these functions, right? So it's going to be an extern C function that takes in an F64 and returns an F64 like so, right? This return type matches these two exactly, and that's required. And all we're going to do is we're just going to do a ternary return. So we're just going to say return if use add, we're going to return the add function, else we're going to return the subtract function. And there we go. So we've conditionally created a function that now we can call from JavaScript and return one of these functions. So let's go ahead and try this out. Inside of JavaScript, we're going to get access to our create math function. So let's go ahead and do that. We have create math function, and it has a parameter list of Boolean, right? It only takes in a Boolean, and its return type is gonna be a function pointer. So we're gonna do results is a pointer, like so. Now let's go ahead and actually get this pointer that we can get access to. So we're gonna say const pointer is equal to a, uh, not new, sorry, we're gonna do lib dots, and we're going to call our create math function. And let's pass in true for now. Remember, true is going to specify it's an add function. So just keep that in the back of the head. And all we're going to do now to get access to this function to be able to call it in JavaScript is say, uh, let's call it add uh, math fn is equal to a new deno dot function, uh, sorry, dot unsafe function pointer. And it's going to take in the pointer value that's already been returned from Rust. So let's do pointer as a big int, because it takes in of type big int. And then the definition of the function, right? So the definition right here. It takes in two doubles and returns a double. So the parameter list is going to be uh, f64. And the result is going to be the same exact thing, right, F64. And now we have access to this math function. So we can go ahead and use it. So we can say const results is equal to, and we can do math function dot call and pass in two doubles. So let's do 34 and 50. And let's just console.log results. Okay, now let's go ahead and actually compile this code. So I'm gonna do cargo build. Perfect, and then we're just gonna do deno run and allow FFI. And we can see we get 84, which should be the correct result, right? 50, 60, 70, 84. Now, if we were to make this false, we can actually create a subtraction function. So let's try that out. And sure enough, we're able to subtract numbers. Now again, we're kind of hard coding these values, but you can imagine at runtime, we could create functions on the fly um, using this technique. So that's pretty nifty. 
Let's now go ahead and move on to our next results. And that's going to be how do we return, um, or sorry, how do we call JavaScript code inside of Rust functions? So let's go ahead and define a function inside of Rust that is going to be basically representative of doing a long operation. So we're going to create a function. I'm just going to copy this call signature right here and get rid of this. And it's going to be called do work. Okay. Now do work is going to take in a counts, which is going to be an I32. And it's going to return an I32. Pretty cool. And let's say we're just going to iterate um, a whole bunch of times and keep track of the sum. So let's mutatable sum is equal to zero. And we're just going to do four i in uh, one dot dots. Let's go to counts plus one. And we're just going to do sum plus equals the um, i. There we go. And we're just going to return sum down here. There we go. So we have this function that does work, and let's actually just add an arbitrary time delay on it as well. So we're going to use a CD time and uh, thread, and what we're going to do is we're just going to sleep for a second each time. So we're going to do uh, thread dots uh, thread sorry sleep, and we're going to sleep for time of duration from, let's just do one second. There we go. So we're basically creating a function that acts like we're doing a whole bunch of work and we want to print off the status result, let's say from JavaScript, right? Instead of returning the sum every time or having some weird method with that, what instead we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in a callback function right here that'll allow us to call into JavaScript from here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's call this status, and it's going to be of type extern c fn, and it takes in an i32, like so. So now this status function, we can actually call from in here. So we're just going to do status imprint out i, like so. There we go. So let's now go ahead and get access and use this function inside of JavaScript. So let's define our do work function inside of JavaScript. So up in here, I'm going to call it do work. And the parameter list is going to be a little bit interesting. So we're going to have an i32. And we're going to pass in a function like so. The result is going to be an i32 like so. OK, so to actually get access to this function, what we need to do is first define a function of this signature, right? It needs to take in an i32 and do something. So let's create this function real quick. Let's say function status takes in a uh, status, which is a number. And all we're going to do is just log the status. So let's just do status like so. So we've created this function, right? It has the same calling structure. Let's now go ahead and actually pass this function to our do work function. So all we have to do is create a reference to this function. So we're going to say uh, callback is equal to a new deno dot unsafe callback. The first thing it takes in is the definition. And the definition is simply this right here. So it's going to be a parameter list of i32 and results of void, right? So, and then we actually pass in the reference to the function. We could also pass in an anonymous function, but I'm gonna just pass in status like so. And there we go. So now we have this callback, which we can use. So let's go ahead and actually pass that callback into do work. So we're just gonna say const results uh, work is equal to, and we're gonna do lib dot do work and we're going to pass in first our count so let's say three and let's pass in the callback so we're going to do callback dot pointer like so and let me just log work there we go so now you can kind of see what we're doing we're creating a reference to a function in javascript we're creating this custom type so that way deno knows how to construct and pass this along over ffm and then we're creating um, 
or we're actually calling this function passing the JavaScript reference to it. And then we're getting back the work. So let's go ahead and test this out. Let's do a cargo build. Perfect. And then let's do uh, our deno run. And what you'll see is we get status one, two, three, and the sum of these is three plus two plus one is six. So this is working as expected. We could pass in a different number like five, and we'll still get all five results as we would expect. Now, let's go ahead and say that what if we wanted this function to be asynchronous, right? Most of the time, there's no point in having a function that's synchronous like this and passing back a kind of response, right? But let's say we want this function to be doing work in the backgrounds and still using the callback though. So let's go ahead and kind of get this all set up. So let's say that if we want this function to be done asynchronously, you may think all we have to do is come up here and say do work is now non-blocking but true. And this is partially correct. However, uh, let's try running it and seeing what happens. So we get promise and nothing seems to be happening. It's like it's frozen. Maybe it's because we didn't await it, right? So let's try awaiting it. And we'll notice this also won't work. And so what's happening here is we have created this function pointer right here, right? This is our actual containing, that pointer value contains our actual memory address that Deno's using for this function right here. But what's happening is, is we're passing this pointer through V8 over to Rust, but V8 is doing something with it that's not allowing Rust to actually call it. It may be getting garbage collected, right? So what we need to do is actually use something called reference counting when doing this. So this work, or not work, sorry, the um, callback has a couple fields on it, and a couple of them are functions. One of them is called ref, and ref will simply say, hey, it adds one count to the reference counting. As long as the reference counting is not zero, Deno will not garbage collect this pointer, and it'll not stop the execution like it currently has. So we're saying, hey, increment the reference count by one. And then what we need to do is we'll need to decrement the reference count. So I'll show you what happens if we do that. So we get the results value. And instead of logging work, let's just log it here. Constable log uh, results value, like so. So let's go ahead and now try this out. So we get status 1, status 2, status 3, status 4, status 5, and the results. But you'll notice that the, the code should stop executing by now, right? We're done. There's no other code to execute. But the reason it's not is because of this reference counting. As if the callback's reference count becomes non-zero, as it is here, it'll keep Deno's process from exiting. So that's not what we want, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to do callback.unref, which is going to decrement the reference count. And now, if we rerun this, we can see that we get one, two, three, four, and five status messages, and then the program executes and terminates as we'd expect to happen. So that is basically, in a nutshell, how um, function pointers and all those things work. Function pointers can be really useful things. Uh, for example, the more common approach you'll see is with the callback style function pointers. Um, you might see the builder factory style function pointers, depending on your use case. But this is a really common pattern. Create a function in JavaScript, right? That instead of logging numbers, does something useful. And it's given a status that's coming from the Rust backend. You can imagine how if we were to re-implement um, some operation of like processing large amounts of data, this status might be the progress or something like that. So it means we can still await on the progress and do things in the meantime, right? But we can continually get updates and inform the user or make decisions on that. So if you found this video useful, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, also consider joining our community Discord server, which I'll leave in the description down below. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.